What's up guys, today I wanted to do a tutorial. It's one that I've been wanting to do for a while now, so what we're gonna do is look at three different ways to get aerial footage like this. Don't stop without using a drone. Let's go. Thanks for watching my channel, guys. Before we get into it, take a minute to subscribe to my channel. I'm posting new vlogs and videos about photography and videography all the time. So if you're into that, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon so that you're notified every time I post a new video. And if you find this video helpful, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. You can also hit that thumbs down if you don't like it. Uh, if you want to follow along in this tutorial, which I highly suggest, head over to unsplash.com and premiumbeat.com and pick up the free footage that I used in this video. The links are in the description. All right, so this is the first look we're gonna go over. Uh, this look was achieved with a photo that I got from unsplash.com. All the editing was done in Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2019. So let's jump in and I'll show you how it's done. All right, let's create a new sequence and throw our photo on that first video layer. I've got my settings where when I add a new video, it automatically resizes it to fit the comp. So let's change that scale back to 100%. From here, we're going to find a good spot or position to end our movement. We'll place a keyframe and move back in time to find a good spot to start. The key to finding a good spot is that you don't want to show anything that would give away the fact that this is an animation and not an actual drone video. Now we'll play that back a few times and see what looks good. I think that looks great. Next we'll add a fog layer on top just to help sell the image a little bit. Change that opacity to add or screen just depending on which looks better. I think that setting looks great on this one. Add a little color grading and boom, there you go. You could take it a step further by adding more clouds, maybe some birds flying, even a car driving on the street, but that's a little beyond the scope of this video, so let's move on. The next method is one that I've done quite a bit. It takes a little bit more time, but the results are great. All you need is a picture and some editing software. Specifically, we're gonna be using Photoshop After Effects and we'll put the final result into Premiere Pro for the final edit. I found this picture on Unsplash.com. Unsplash is my go-to for beautiful free photos. I'm not sponsored by them or by anybody else, but they really have great free photos. Go check them out, unsplash.com. I'll leave a link in the description. This specific photo is great because of all of the mountain layers that are in frame. When I'm picking a photo for this kind of video, that's the first thing that I look for is, can I easily extract the layers from the photo? Once you've got your photo, jump into Photoshop or your photo editing suite of choice. The important thing is that you have to be able to save your layers with a transparent background. So remember that the backgrounds have to be transparent. Next, we'll start extracting our layers. I usually start by duplicating and hiding the background layer, and then I'll mask the foreground, and I'll continue that process until all the layers are masked out and the full image is revealed. Now, there is an extra step that I usually take because we're gonna be using these layers as 3D objects. It's very important that every part of those layers have some kind of visual where they're supposed to. In other words, you don't want a mountain to be invisible on the bottom of it because if you're flying a drone in 3D over a mountain in the foreground, you'll eventually see the sky under the mountain in the background. It'll give away our move. But luckily, this is an easy fix in Photoshop. All we have to do is select the empty parts of the layers that we want to fill, right click, make sure that the content aware uh, little clicker thing is on, and boom, like magic, we've got a full mountain or a full sky where it was just a transparent background. And just like that, we're done with Photoshop. So let's save it and hop on over to After Effects. Okay, so let's create a new composition. We want full HD, so let's make it 1920 by 1080. We want a cinematic look, so let's go for 23.976 frames per second, the best frames per second. Let's drag our Photoshop file into After Effects, select the editable layers and let that load. Now we'll go into the composition that we created from the Photoshop file and select those files from top to bottom. 
That's important. The way you select the layers in AE affects the way that they paste. So from top to bottom and go back into that empty comp that we created and paste those layers there. You'll see them appear, but they may or may not be in the scene. So we need to reposition them and set the anchor point to somewhere in the middle. Now that all of these layers appear in the scene, let's turn them into 3D layers and move them back in Z space. Like from, you always wanna make sure that there is distance from one layer to the next. So if a mountain's here, you want the other mountain to be back here, but you see how this hand is now different size than that hand. So now you'll have to resize it. So we'll resize that layer and until they're about the same size that they were before. Don't be too stuck on this part, just get it kind of close. Now we'll make a new camera layer and create some movement. You can do slider action by going side to side, dolly action by going up and down, but my favorite thing to do is to combine a few of those moves. I'll start by pushing the camera forward or pulling it backwards and then adding some pans and tilts, um, maybe moving the camera from left to right, I think that looks pretty good. Now that our move is looking good, we'll add that fog layer. Um, again, we're going to change the opacity to either screen or add, just depends on what looks good. I think add sometimes gives it a glow effect, so I think we'll use screen on this one. That's looking good. And now we've got something that looks like we flew a drone high in the Himalayas. I've never been to the Himalayas, so that's really cool. So the last look we're going to do is probably my new favorite and it involves very little editing at all. Um, and it might give the best result out of all of them. What you need is a screen capture software. I'm using QuickTime and Google Earth. We're gonna start the screen capture and head on over to Google Earth. I suggest downloading the desktop version so that you have more control. And if you're in a spot where the internet is slow or something, that doesn't affect you. Now we just pick a location and slowly make some interesting camera moves. What's cool about this is that you can pick any place in the world. You're not affected by drone laws or airspace laws or any of that. What's really cool is that you can pick any place in the world and it'll give you some pretty ridiculous looking results. After we have what we need from the screen capture, the only thing you really need to do is color grade that footage so that it's less digital looking. Obviously, you can take that footage to a whole nother level by adding 3D camera tracking, adding clouds, replacing the sky, adding birds and texture and that kind of thing. But all of that's another topic for another video. I have a feeling a follow-up is coming for this one, but what do you guys think? Do you want to see how to get the most realistic drone footage from Google Earth? Let me know in the comments, and like I said earlier, uh, don't forget to like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, follow my channel for more videos like this one, and hit that bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. That's it for this one, we'll see you in the next one.